everybody, and welcome back to Digital Integrated Circuits. I'm Professor Adam Thiemann of the Annex Labs at bar -Ilan University, and now we'll be going over the second Kahoot for Lecture 10 Arithmetic Theory Circuits, focusing on multipliers. In this Kahoot, we'll have eight questions, and the first is, with an n-bit multiplicand and an m-bit multiplier, how many partial products are there? Are there n partial products? m partial products, n plus m partial products, or n times m partial products? And the answer, of course, is m. Let's go back to our slides and remember why. So when we're talking about uh, multiplication using serial addition, how we would do it on a piece of paper, if we take two binary operands, so you see here that we have two binary operands, we call the top one the multiplicand and the bottom one the multiplier. And in order to do multiplication, what we would do is we would start with the LSB of the multiplier. And since this is just a binary um, multiplication of one bit um, times another vector, what we're going to do is we're going to end you know, the, uh, this bit with each one of the bits of the multiplicand. And an and with a one is just you know, the, the bit itself. And and with a zero, of course, is a zero. So basically, if we have a one in the multiplier, what we're going to do is just get a copy of the multiplicand, and we'll write that underneath. Next, we're going to go over to the second bit. And that means we're going to shift everything by, uh, by one place or multiply everything by um, you know, two, two to the power of zero. Okay, so then again, we have a one over here and that means one times the entire multiplicand is just a copy of the multiplicand, but now shift it over by one place. Again, we're going to shift that over by one and now we have a multiplication by zero, which is just a vector of zeros, of course. And finally, we're going to shift down now and uh, move that over one more and have another one over here, which means we're going to copy uh, a line of ones. Um, what we're going to do to get our final product is we're going to sum all of these numbers and we will get our uh, final product. So these guys over here, they are called partial products. And we saw that we get one partial product per each of these bits of the multiplier. And if we said that this is n bits in our Kahoot question, and this is m bits, so um, the number of partial products is exactly the number of bits in the multiplier, so it's going to be m bits. So our answer to the question is, of course, m. For the second question, if we have the same n bit multiplicand and n bit multiplier, how many bits are there in the final product? So are there m plus n bits, a maximum of m and n bits, 2n plus 1 bits, or 2 times m plus n bits? And the answer in this case is going to be, of course, m plus n. Let's go back over there. And what we can see, of course, is that we um, had exactly, you know, the, the, the first row is going to be copied down, and that is n bits over here. Um, so that's going to be n bits over here. And that's going to be, you know, the first row that's going to get over to this in the, in the product. Then we're going to shift by 1, shift by 2, shift by 3. So we're going to shift by exactly m minus 1 uh, shifts. And that means that we're going to have another m minus 1 over here on the, on the left side, right, uh, bits. And finally, um, what we have is we have an additional carry, possible carry, over to this side. So we get n minus 1 plus an additional possible carry. That means equals a total of m extra bits. And therefore, we have in the total final product um, m plus n. Or if we could look at it differently, we can look at a dot diagram of such a multiplication, and this is a common way of showing such multiplication. So in this case, we take a typical case where n and m are um, equal. So we have n bits over here for the multiplicand and n bits for the multiplier. And what we're going to do is we're going to get the number of partial products that's going to be equal to the number of multiplier bits. So we get n bits over here. Okay, we're going to have exactly n minus 1 shifts, n minus 1 shifts over here. And that's going to give us, you know, this, which is going to be n, uh, 2n minus 1, but there is a possible carry at the, uh, when we um, do this addition, so that's going to be exactly 2n bits on the final product. Or in our Kahoot itself, it was going to be m plus n if m and n are different. So that is the answer to that question. 
For the next question, we're going to say, what is the complexity of an n-bit serial shift and add multiplication, assuming we're using ripple carry adders? So is it going to be O of n, O of n log n, O of 2n, or O of n squared? And so the answer, of course, to this one is going to be O of n squared. And let's go back and look at our slides again. So this is a serial shift and add type of a system over here on the right. And the concept is that we're going to be that multiplying by one is just copying the multiplicand. And that's what we saw before. Multiplying by zero is actually um, taking a row of zeros. So for that, we're going to have this multiplexer over here that on one side is going to get the multiplicand and on the other side is going to get a zeros. And depending on if our multiplier bit is going to be a one or a zero, we're going to either select to drive the multiplicand over into uh, an accumulator or just add zeros. So we're going to select the multiplicand or zeros according to the multiplier bit. Then we're going to add it to the result over here and drive the result back to this partial product accumulator over here. But each time we're going to shift the multiplier by one. Um, and so that's going to accumulate the result, but it's also going to drive the next bit of the multiplier into the, uh, into the mux over here. So that is going to take us exactly, you know, um, n times to do it, uh, or I guess you would call it m times because that is a, the size of our um, multiplier. We're going to need these m shifts over here, but we're also going to need such m additions over here. And um, the additions are going to, you know, uh, be a complexity of, of, uh, of n because... Uh, because, uh, you know, it's a ripple carry adder. So our uh, serial addition is going to be O of n times, you know, the time it takes to do one adder. And if we have, you know, um, n bits in our multiplier and n bits in our multiplicand, that's going to be um, a complexity of O of n. So O of n times O of n is going to be O of n squared. Okay, so the answer over here is going to be O of n squared. Question number four. With an n-bit multiplicand and an n-bit multiplier, what is the complexity of an array multiplier? And we can see uh, an array multiplier over here in the picture. Is it going to be O of n, O of m, O of n plus m, or O of n times m? And of course, in this case, we're going to have O of n plus m. So let's go back to that. Um, when we discussed our serial shift and add, that was very important when we had really a limited type of hardware or kind of if we were going to do this, you know, in a, with a for loop um, doing multiplication with an adder. So we just use an adder to apply this multiplication. And in real old hardware, um, you would not have a whole multiplier uh, because the each transistor and each piece of hardware was very expensive. So you could do implement such a serial shift in add, but it was really expensive because we got this O of n square um, you know, timing constant. Um, in addition, if we have some really cheap embedded hardware, maybe they won't want to put a multiplier because maybe it'll be expensive. And you can uh, run, you know, a just a for loop with um, uh, addition instructions to do this. With um, modern hardware where the transistors are cheaper, what we can do is we can just do these things in parallel. And then we can get to this kind of a uh, uh, of an array multiplier type of a, uh, of, a, of a structure over here. So what we do is we um, calculate the partial product bits with AND gates. So we have y0 times x0, y0 times x1, etc., etc. And we have y1 times x0, y1 times x1, etc., etc. These are all just AND gates. And we have AND gates for every one of these you know, um, uh, multiplications of the uh, multiplier bits by the multiplicand. And what we're going to do basically is we're going to, for each of those multiplications, we get a partial product. So basically this is one partial product and this is another partial product. And what we need to do is um, add those together because we have, we learned about adders that can take two um, vectors. So we add those together. That's, this is a ripple carry adder. Okay. And then we take the product of it, which comes out over here. We can see over here, these are the product of the ripple carry adder. And we take the next uh, partial product and we add them together as well with another ripple carry adder. And we get all of these ripple carry adders. So the problem with this is that it, um, our critical path, as we can see, has the, you know, the carry going down through this whole path and then going through the final ripple carry adder, which is very long. It's, um, you know, n in this direction um, and n in this direction. 
right? And that's a, a two n type of a of a critical path. The problem is if we would just go and try to optimize this critical path and make it real fast, we have more critical paths because this is also two n and this is also two n, and therefore we always get this you know o of n plus m or two n depending on if uh, we have. Um, you know, uh, n size operands or n and m size operands, okay, and there are many critical paths, so it's really hard to solve this type of a thing. That, uh, to, to just improve that a bit, we can use the carry save multiplier approach, which is a real cool kind of a concept, and I want to just go over it quickly over here. So, um, one thing that we, we kind of can realize is that, you know, when we do y0 times x0, we immediately get the product, which is just the, the 2 to the power of 0, um, uh, you know, bit in, in the final product. And then when we go over here, we take y0 times x1 and y1 times x0 and add them. And again, immediately, you know, we get the product for the 2 to the power of 1 um, bit in our final product. And for each of these, you know, uh, spaces or places, uh, each column, you know, this becomes 2 to the power of 2, 2 to the power of 3, etc., etc. So basically, if we take a bit over here, for example, okay, that's going to be 2 to the power of 5. That's the weight of the sum that comes out of this full adder. And it doesn't matter if we, um, you know, took uh, the the inputs for this thing as you know this uh, this partial product bit and the sum of this ripple carry adder and the carry that comes from somewhere else it doesn't matter as long as the weight of that is two to the power of five so we get the final um, you know uh, product bit that's going to be two to the power of five and therefore what the carry save multiplier does it says listen instead of rippling the carry along you know these ripple carry adders each time which is very expensive as we saw what we can do is we don't have to wait for it we can take the um, carry that comes out of each stage and just drive it along and forward it basically to the the next column which is where it has to go because it has a weight of two to the power of whatever our i is plus one um, but we can make it an input to basically the next stage or the next ripple carry adder, but this is going to continue. So each of these carries is going to go as an input to the next stage. You know, if we take a carry from any of these bits, we uh, put it as an input down there, and that really reduces our critical path. In fact, our critical path comes out only to be along this really long one, which has to carry all the way down here. And then we just have to do this final addition in this direction over here. So there are many of these, you know, uh, ones that go down this path, the carries, they all go down this, you know, um, end long path. But then they just have to get, uh, th this has a shorter path to get to the end, and this has a shorter path to get to the end. And we can make this final adder much faster with some sort of carry look ahead adder or something like that. So we can make, reduce the complexity to n plus log uh, of n. Um, that also being said, we can make a really nice layout of this, which we saw before. And layouts are very important, especially in something with so many bits and so many wires and such complexity. You know, the uh, layout can be very problematic. And if we can find some sort of structure that makes the layout really pretty, I, uh, I would call it, um, gives us short wires, that's also an important point. So carry save multiplier is really a nice way, a clean way of um, doing this type of a, uh, a multiplication. So the answer, of course, is O of N plus M. Question number five. What is the Radix 2 boot recoding of 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0? And here are four possible answers, and I'll let you look at that for a while. And I just want to tell you that this is uh, Mr. Booth over here who was a researcher at Manchester and came up with this type of recoding. As you look at that, I hope you arrived at the answer in this yellow box over here. 0, minus 1, 1, minus 1, 1, 0, minus 1, 0. And let's go back again to our slides and figure that one out. So what is Radix 2 Booth recoding? Um, so Booth uh, noticed that when we were using serial shift, uh, uh, shift and add type of operations, if we are adding a, you know, 0, we don't actually have to wait that uh, you know propagation delay of the adder 
we can just do zero skipping. Adding zero is really simple. We just have to, you know, go to the next operation, shift the multiplier, and that's all we have to really do. So we would like to have our um, multiplier have as many zeros as possible, and then we can just skip them over rather than doing that, you know, heavy addition that we had before. And so um, can we find some sort of encoding uh, for our multiplier that will have um, many more zeros than it will have ones. And he came up with this algorithm where we will parse the multiplier from left to right, and for each change from zero to one, we'll encode a one. For each change from one to zero, encode a minus one. And for bit zero, we'll assume that i minus one is a zero. So in the example we showed you, you know, we have this long vector over here of 12 bits, which um, is equal to, you know, 373 in hex. And we can see that because this is three, this is seven, and this is three. Um, uh, when we look at four bits, which represent a hexa type of a, an encoding. So we know that this uh, is 0x373. And what Booth's um, approach says is, listen, we can go and um, write and do what I said here, you know, this little algorithm here, and we reach this encoding 010 minus 1, 100 minus 1, 010 minus 1, 010 minus 1. And it's actually just a sum of you know, the um, one bits and the minus one bits, or actually a subtraction of them. So if we just look at the one bits over here, so this is a one bit, this is a one bit, this is a one bit, okay, and we write the vector over here, we can see that it comes out, you know, this is four, this is eight, this is four, so it comes out, you know, in hexa 484. Four. And if we look at just the minus one bits over here, um, over here and over here, and we put the minus over here and write, you know, this vector of, of ones uh, across here, that comes out one, and this is one, and this is one. So 484 minus 111 equals 373, and uh, presto, you see that this 373 and this 373 are the same. So this encoding is fine if we introduced, instead of just having a binary zero and one, we have now a tr uh, ternary zero, one, and minus one representation. And what it should do in most cases is give us more zeros because every time we have you know a a um, length a run length of uh, non-changing bits we get a zero which can in a good case uh, provide us with more zeros and there, therefore more you know uh, zero skipping shifts okay so um, let's see what we had in in the example um, before so uh, let's start by adding a zero over here to i minus one and then we can go and look at you know zero zero is going to be a zero one zero is going to be minus one, one one is going to be zero, zero one is going to be one, one zero is going to be minus one, zero one is going to be one, one zero is going to be uh, minus one, and one one is going to be zero. So we get this representation of zero minus one, one minus one, one zero minus one zero, which was the answer to our Kahoot question. Okay, so that was um, Radix 2 Booth Recoding. Or Radix 4 Modified Booth Recording of this long vector. And remember to use the table. So this long vector is 110, 11011, and we have all these options over here. And I'll give you quite some time to take a look at this table and try to figure out what it is. Oh, after looking at it for a little bit, I, you can choose the green answer, which will be the right one. And let's go back and see how this is done. So as I said, Radix 2 Booth Recoding was trying to maximize the number of zeros we have in our multiplier. But that doesn't really help once we go into a parallel multiplication, such as an array multiplier, because we have to implement, you know, the multiplication by zero in any case, because we don't know um, when we design the hardware if we're going to have a zero or a one in, in the multiplier bit. So um, it doesn't really help us to maximize the zeros, but the same concept can be used to reduce the number of partial products. And reduction of the number of partial products is really good because it makes that critical path basically shorter. So modified booth recoding is an attempt to go and reduce the number of partial products by um, adding these additional bits instead of having just a zero and one bit, have more than a zero and one bit. We saw in regular, in Radix 2 booth recoding, we add zero, one, and minus one. So with uh, Radix 4 booth recoding, we're gonna have zero, one, minus one, but we're gonna add plus two and minus two as well. So the basic algorithm is based on, um, on the uh, Radix 2 booth recoding 
we saw before. And we're going to first apply standard booth recoding to this. So we have a zero over here, right? So one zero is going to be um, minus one, one one is going to be zero, zero one is going to be one, one zero is going to be minus one, one one is going to be zero, zero one is going to be one, zero zero is going to be zero, zero zero is going to be zero, zero zero is going to be zero, one zero is going to be minus one, zero one is going to be one, one zero is going to be minus one, and one one is going to be zero. I just want to point out that what we're doing here, remember, is turning something like, um, you know, uh, uh, something like uh, one one into zero minus one. That's one zero zero minus one. So anyway, we have to add, you know, a, an additional bit over here, which is going to be zero in order to uh, apply this when we start with a zero. So it doesn't actually turn the one one into zero. So then we're going to have one zero over here. So this is going to be another one. So for the MSB, we have to do that. Um, then what we would be doing is looking at the sequences over here. And um, so what we're going to do is just look at every you know, pair of bits over here. And we're going to see that we uh, need to you know, um, turn them into, into this, uh, uh, this lookup table over here, which is actually showing what the uh, sum or the value of a pair of bits is over here. So zero in the twos position and minus one in the ones position is going to be minus one, okay? Minus one in the twos position and plus one in the ones position is minus two plus one is going to be minus one, okay? One zero, so one in the twos position, zero in the ones position is gonna be plus two, okay? Zero zero is going to be zero, of course. Um, minus one zero, minus one times two is minus two, plus zero, uh, minus one times two plus one times one is going to be minus one, and one zero is going to be again plus two. So that is our final encoding, two minus one, minus two, zero, plus two, minus one, minus one. And I didn't want to ask you to do that entire process during the coup, that would be a bit too hard, but um, luckily uh, we put together this lookup table, which enables us to do this, um, you know, immediately. So what we're going to do is again add our zero over here, and now look at... Um, you know, three bits, we're going to take these three bits and put them into the table. So we see that one, one, zero is going to be just minus one. Then we're going to overlap one over here. So we have one, zero, one now, and one, zero, one in our lookup table is going to be, again, minus one. Then we're going to take our next three bits, zero, one, one, zero, one, one is going to be plus two. Then our next three bits, zero, 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 that's going to be a zero. Then we're going to take our next three bits and we have one zero zero that's going to be minus two okay one zero one one zero one is going to be minus one and um, finally we have zero one one is going to be uh, plus two so we see that we get plus two minus one minus two zero plus two minus one and minus one and that's really cool that it works and furthermore what we can do is we can encode this type of a table into some logic that is applied to the multiply uh, to the uh, multiplier before we in, in insert the bits, and that can really reduce the number of partial products. So as you can see here, we started with you know one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen bits, which would have been. 13 partial products and we ended it up with one two three four five six seven which is almost half the number of partial products which means our critical path is going to be half as long or almost half as long um, that does not come for free because we need this logic in order to carry this out but the logic is not that um, expensive it's a couple of uh, gates it costs a bit in terms of hardware and it costs a bit in terms of um, of latency, but that can really reduce us a lot in uh, terms of our entire critical path. So Radix for booth recoding is a popular way of solving this type of stuff. Okay, so going back to our quiz, why do we often call a full adder a compressor? Because it is used in compression algorithms, because it puts pressure on the bits that are running through it, because it binary encodes the number of inputs, or this is not something a full adder is called. So I think I discussed that in part one of this Kahoot, but the answer of course is because it encodes, uh, it binary encodes the number of bits and all the other answers were just, um, just to give something to uh, mix you up maybe. So I just want to go back to this. And we saw that this full adder, which is a simple little gate, 
you know, a simple little truth table, we can break it down in all kinds of ways and make it look really cool with all these kills, generates, propagates, majorities, and so forth and so on. But one way of looking at this is that a full adder is just a counter. It, it asks, we have three inputs over here, input one, input two, and input three, and we ask how many ones, right? How many ones do we have? And we, uh, at the output, we put, you know, um, the answer is here, and this is, you know, going to be binary encoded, so this is going to be the two to the one, and this is going to be two to the zero. So we can say, you know, if we have, uh, you know, uh, zero ones, it's going to be zero, zero. If we have three ones, it's going to be one, one, etc. And so what we did actually is this, uh, we, we, we put in a number of bits and we said how many are there and we gave it a binary encoding and binary encoding something took three inputs and turned it into two outputs. And that was a type of compression. And when it's three inputs that turn into two outputs, our compression ratio is going to be three over two. Um, so we're going to get a, a nice, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, compressed by one and a half or, or uh, get it two thirds the size. So that's really nice when we want to go and, you know, count the number of uh, ones and introduce a population counter. And that's why a, a full adder is often called a compressor. There are other compressor circuits out there. For instance, you can find in many standard cell libraries a cell that is called a four to two compressor. Um, so there is a, there are other ways of doing it, but in general, the common compressor being used is just the full adder, which is a three to two compressor. Our final question about multipliers is what is the reduction achieved by a Wallace tree multiplier? Is it going to be one over n? Is it going to be log of n, log two of n, of course? Is it going to be log 1.5 of n, or is it going to be n squared? And based on the uh, answer to uh, our previous question about the compressor, it's of course log one over five of n, assuming that we're using full adders. Well, let's go back and understand this. So Wallace tree multiplier is one of the fastest algorithms for um, implementing multiplication in hardware. And what it does basically, it takes our partial product array. So we wrote down our partial product array here as you know, these, uh, the, the, this dot representation. And as we said before, what we wanna do here is get the answer, right? This is going to be, you know, two to the power of zero. This is going to be two to the power of one. This is gonna be two to the power of two and so forth. And each of these bits are shifted by, by two. And, um, what we can do here really is, again, we immediately can know the, the sum over here. Um, but when we take these two guys, what we have to do is we're not going to have any of the dots over here that are not going to affect this. So we just need to really see how many ones are over here, sum them up, and we'll get, you know, the product over here, the, the, the bit over here that's going to be 2 to the power of 1. Of course, there are two bits over here, and we can't represent that in one bit in the output. So it, it, we need two bits to represent how many um, ones are in two bits. It can be, you know, 0, which would be 0, 0. It can be 1, which would be 0, 1. Or it can be two bits, which would be 1, 0. But where does that second bit come from? Well, of course, it's one, uh, you know, one column over. So... We just need to count the number of bits, write the LSB over here, and write the MSBs to the left of it. So what we're going to do is put a half adder over here and pass the carry over to the next column in our kind of next stage. And over here, the same thing. We're going to count how many there are. There are up to three bits. So we put it in a full adder. And with the full adder, we get the, the, the sum is going to be how many bits that are weight 2 to the power of 2, you know. Um, and and then the carry is going to be if there are if if there is something that's two to the power of four, and that's going to be again pushed over to the next column. The problem is that we our biggest compressor that we have using a full adder is just for three bits. So once we have a column that has more than three bits, what we're going to do is we're going to use a number of full adders. So for example, taking um, this guy here, we're going to use one full adder and two full adders, and we're going to have two outputs. We're going to have the sum of this and the sum of this. We have to drive that to another stage. Or we're going to have two bits left over. Um, they're also going to push out carries. So these carries are going to go over to the next column. Okay, and in this column, again, we took these two guys. They're going to add two sums. We didn't do anything with this guy, so there's going to be another one. Plus, we're going to push over the carries over here, which are going to be two carries over here, plus whatever comes out of over here. Okay, so that's going to bring us basically to the next stage where we're going to have leftover stuff. So this one, nothing happens to it. These two, they put out, you know, just a single sum. 
um, which is going to be over here. But as we saw, we got one bit, which was the carry of this half adder, and one bit, which was the sum of this full adder. They're going to be, you know, two bits over here, and we need another half adder to, to provide the final sum that's going to come out of this column. Um, for for the, the the next stage over, you know, we had uh, we had um, you know uh, more than that even because we had the carry that came out of over here that was one bit the the sum that came out of this full adder and this bit that we never treated so that's going to pr provide us you know with three bits on our next stage and then we can use the full adder again to provide one sum so we're going to keep on doing this until we finally reduce our whole thing until it gets to be just two vectors once it's two vectors you know we can take the two vectors that are less which are sh shorter than n you see we already know what the sum bits are over here we don't need to calculate them and we just need to put this in inside an adder and get our final solution which can be you know log of n divided by whatever um, that is the number of bits that we have left over here. So we get this uh, reduction, which is going to be according to the compression ratio of our uh, full adder, which is going to be, you know, log uh, 3 over 2, okay, uh, of n or something like that, plus, you know, the additional um, uh, um, the adder over here. But in general, if, the, if we have a lot, lot, lot of partial products, which can be the case if we're doing some sort of fused dot product, we can get really a nice reduction that is logarithmic in the size of the compressor. So um, our answer over here is going to be log 1.5 n. So that was it for this lecture. And if you have any questions, as usual, feel free to ask me on my YouTube channel.